Hello and welcome to another episode of Beyond Loss, Loving Life with Karen Chaston. As you've probably gathered, I am Karen Chaston. And it's great to be here today, as it is every Monday at noon Australian Eastern Centre Time. So what are we going to talk about today? So today I'm really excited that I'm going to talk to you that yesterday was my birthday. Hi, Kylie, great to see you here. So yesterday was my birthday and I have this little ritual that I like to do on my birthday. Actually, there's a couple of little rituals that I love to do on my birthday. But um, one of the things that I love to do is I actually photograph or photograph film me dancing to another one bites the dust I've been doing this for about six years and the intentions of why I do this is so that at my funeral everyone is going to be told to stop being sad to stand up and let's all dance to another one bites the dust which will then obviously have graphics of me doing all of these little things across the years. Realising that there's probably going to be about 30 different years of me doing this. So that's what I do and that's what I love to do. So I'll just answer these um, little messages. Michelle, I don't do readings. I am a beyond lost expert and I like to help people to move beyond any kind of loss. And there are over 40 different kinds of loss. Loss is, um, you know, most people think of loss as the death of a loved one. There is so many more. There's divorce, a partnership breakdown, a job loss, your health, your wealth, your pets. And if we go back into the 2020 pandemic, all of the losses that sort of arrived then were a lot of the minor ones, which most of us would probably never have thought of before. Loss of freedom, loss of choice, loss of status, loss of identity, changing work conditions, changing recreational activities, changing social activities. So there's so many loss events and that's what I love to talk about. So I don't do a reading, so I totally understand, Michelle, if you decide not to hang around for the next, you know, 45 minutes, hour. But what I do do is I do actually draw a card for the group, not individuals, from these channeled spiritual guidance cards. So let's get into the one that I grew just um, while I was waiting to come on, which is today number card 39 called Angel Warrior, uh, which I will read to you now because it's obviously, I haven't even read it. I never read them until I come on, but it's really amazing how um, even though it's for the group, it will certainly resonate with you individually as well as collectively. So let's read it and let's go on and then post in if this resonates with you. you are, it's called Angel Warrior. You are never alone. She protects you as she opens you to the portals of life to ensure that it is safe before you proceed. You may be hesitating before moving forward as you sense a need to give yourself some time. Listen to your soul. It knows that for this alignment of your journey to fall into place, it takes time. And as your protector, she, is, is, she will be ensuring a safe and comfortable passage through the doorway. She is your light and your guide. She will protect you as you shelter under her wings. You will grow within and in your world. You will step forward unafraid. Now let's have a look at the photo. How amazing is that? And how amazing are her wings, you know, to wrap around you, to guide you, to protect you as you're moving forward. So I hope that uh, resonates with you are you stopping are you sort of not about to go forward in something that you want to do are you stepping back well just know that things do take times and we all want everything right now we really don't want to have to wait for anything we want it exactly now but when you do wait it really is surprising how much you really do appreciate what you receive and not only that through time, things change. And if you sort of got what you wanted, say, six months ago, it may be different now. It may come in a different form for you now. So I hope that card helps everyone today. Right. So let me have a look. Um, let me see. Hi, Kylie. Hi, Christine. Hi, Hazel. Um, 
And thank you for saying happy birthdays for yesterday for all of the people who did. Hi, Kerry. Hi, Melinda, Zoe. Yes, great. Thanks. So thanks, Kerry and Zoe, for actually piping in and say that it hits the spot because it's surprising how often it does hit the spot. So as I started today, I'm not sure if everyone was on when I started talking, I have this ritual which I do every year on my birthday, which was yesterday, and I dance to a number one bites of dust with the intention of it showing at my funeral. Now, my question to you today is, how do you feel about death? Like I'm not saying it's going to happen today, but it's good for us all to realise that the date has been set. We just don't know when that date is set for. And I, I, I have a really great relationship with death, with my own finite um, realisations that there will come a time where I won't be in this realm, that I'll go back to the other one. And I also am excited, I guess is a good word. Not that I'm in a rush for it to happen, but I know that when I do pass, I will be greeted by my past loved ones, um, especially Dan, my son who passed away nearly 10 years ago now. And, you know, we'll have a party. We'll have a, a get together, a really nice party. And then, of course, I'll do my life review. So let's talk about what a life review is. So a life review is that before we come down here, we have our life set out. Now, we have free will. So it's not as though it's set out every single second, this is what's going to happen. So even though we set it out before we come down here, things happen. We live in a dense world. Uh, there's a lot of density around here and it's really can be quite difficult down here at times. Things happen. We can go into... Um, into our limited um, possibilities. We can get into where we're scared, where we're fearful, where we limit ourselves through what we believe. And so we may not achieve everything that we set out to do. And in that journey, so in that life review, we're going to say, well, this is what we decided to do and this is what we actually got done. Why was there a discrepancy? Because we're all spiritual beings having a human experience and we all came down here to grow on a spiritual level as well as to have fun and to, you know, play a role, I guess, is a great way to do it. You are the star of your life. You are the, the star. You are the one who has chosen to look like the way you look, to hang out with the people that you hang out, to have all of these life challenges come your way as well as all of these life's loves and amazing times as well because life is that journey of ups and downs and let's face it if we didn't have the ups and downs and it was all just one straight line if you compare it to a heartbeat monitor well that would mean you were dead because it's in the great times that you really do love your life, but it's in the down times that you get your lessons so that you can then learn how to very quickly come back to the great times, but more importantly, so that you can actually really value where you are and what you've been through as you look back and do the review. Okay, so let's see. Um, yep, Melinda, the angel was cute. Um, great, Kerry. Uh, the angel certainly meant something to me. Thank you for the card. Great, Michelle. Um, I'm scared to experience my parents' deaths. Okay, Christine. So I gather your parents are still alive. And what is it that you're you're scared about? You know, there's a great realization that I had. I know. Um, yeah, it was. I think it was. Yeah, it was after Dan passed. Um, and the realization was that you were the only person that you were going to spend your entire life with. You're the only one that you hang out 24-7 with every week of your life. You're the only one that, you know, was there at the beginning who will be there at the end. So it's, you know, and it's really sad, obviously, when your parents leave um, this realm, but it's also a natural progression of life um, especially when you consider, well, you know, if it'd be great if it was always that 
the older people left before the younger people, but obviously it doesn't always happen that way. So I guess it's with with your parents that you actually come to a realisation that possibly, more than likely, they will go on to their next adventure before you do. So when you say you're scared um, of to experience your parents' death, I'd, I'd like you to expand on that a little bit, Christine, but what I'd also like to say is if you have no regrets in your relationship with your parents, there's no requirement for you to have regrets you know what I mean so if you're ensuring that everything with your relationship with your parents is on a amazing sort of level all of the time so if you get rid of the baggage if you get rid of things that have happened and all that sort of stuff then you can actually have a great relationship and sure you'll be sad but being sad when someone dies is different to being in anger um, and thinking that you can't live without them and all those sort of things. I'm not sure if that helps or not. Um, okay. Okay, Tam and Jordan, people who are asking for a reading, I don't do that. I am a Beyond Lost expert, okay? I'm here to help you move beyond any kind of loss in your life. So I don't read cards. I will sometimes, not every week, read a group card, which I've already done for today. So I totally understand if you are having trouble. Now, okay, so I'm not going to give you a card, Jordan, but I'm going to ask you a question. You lost your mother in January and you're struggling, feeling her around. Would love to know if she has a message for me. Okay, as I said, I don't do that. But why do you feel she's not around? Um, and what way would you like her to be around? Have you, do you meditate? Do you sit and journal? Do you sit and actually start writing her a letter? Have you written her a letter um, on how grateful you are that she was your mother, the things that you do, the things that she taught you? And, you know, the things that she taught you could be, um the complete opposite of what she did like sometimes people do things and you say to yourself oh my god I'm never going to do that so that's them teaching you in a roundabout way of showing you how not to be so um Jordan I am more than happy for you to reach out to me privately and we can have a chat like obviously I have programs um, and I'll just get up a copy. I'll just, just a sec. I'll get up a copy. I'll post a couple of things in your here. So I do have a life after loss um, ebook, which I'll copy now um, into the messages. And maybe it's about you sitting and reading that ebook. I'm also in the process while I'm here, got everyone here. I'm just on the final stages of writing my Demystifying Loss book, which is a paperback one. Obviously, the one that I've just shared now is an ebook. And my intention is to pitch it to publishers in July, which is really, really exciting. And that's what I'm preparing for. Um, so that in itself will obviously be able to help people to read the book. It's like 350 pages long, really deep staves into how we currently do loss and then a more loving way to do loss. Because when you look at loss, especially a death of a loved one, we've never really been taught what to do, how to act. And a lot of the times, because we haven't been taught that, we go into avoidance and we stay in avoidance for a very long time. As human beings, we have got so great at avoidance. All we've got to do is look at the world, look at the trillion dollar industries of pharmaceuticals, of um, obviously pharmaceuticals, of alcohol industries, of um, you know, shopping, there is so many things that we're so great at avoidance, social media, Netflix, all of those things are avoidance tactics. They're so that we don't have to feel. But the funny thing about it is that when you deep dive into your feelings, 
And it's not easy. I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to say it's easy. But when you take the time to deep dive into your feelings, they have messages for you. They're actually your friend. They're bringing you little messages. And what they're saying to you is, this needs to be healed. And it could have been something within the relationship that was said or done or not said or not done. And the beautiful thing about it is that the more that you deep dive into what you were feeling, the more you can heal the relationship. Now, our relationships, like one-to-one relationships, it doesn't matter who it's with, whether it's with your parents, your siblings, your colleagues, your bosses, it doesn't really matter who it is, or even a total stranger. Like you can have a relationship with a total stranger. You can make eye contact. You can sort of just... How are you? And then you can move on. That is still having a relationship. But the thing about our relationships that most people really don't understand is that we, uh, there's three aspects to it. So there's the physical aspect. And that the physical is the way that you hang out together, the things you do, the things you say, the way you touch each other, the, you know, and you have so many amazing loving memories around the way you have physically been together. And I'm not just talking about sexually. I'm talking about just hanging out together and, you know, going to a restaurant or whatever the activity was that you did together. The second aspect is the emotional side. Now, that encompasses all of the good, the bad, the glad and the sad. So in every relationship, you have all different kinds of emotions come up at different periods because we're human beings. So there will always be something, not all the time, but occasionally you may have a little disagreement about something or you may say something that you, you know, wish you hadn't have said and vice versa. You may have something said to you that you cannot, you find it really, really hard to forgive that person for saying that to you. And then, of course, the third aspect of every relationship is the spiritual part. Now, the spiritual part is that intangible part, right? We know that we're connected to that person, place or thing. We're just not sure why we are so connected. So we have the three aspects of the relationship. Now, when the loss event occurs, and it could be any sort of loss event, it could be a death or it could be a divorce or it could be a job loss or it could be your health or your wealth or whatever. The only thing that ends is the physical part of the relationship because the emotional and the spiritual part will live on forever. But it's the emotional part that we don't know how to move beyond. We haven't really been taught how to deep dive into our emotions. And a lot of the times we have our friends and family and other people saying to us, aren't you over that yet? Like, why are you so upset about this? Or why are you grieving? And with some of the 40 plus loss events, some of them are, you know, things that you wouldn't, you don't think of them as loss because that they are, and they're causing you grief and you're suffering and you're going, why am I feeling like this? I, I don't understand why I can't just get over this. And it's because of this emotional turmoil that's going on inside of you that when you deep dive into it, you will find the answer to what requires healing. And the beauty is that when you find that answer, you will then receive a gift, a lesson. And the gift is not in the actual loss of that. It's who you become and what you learn and how you grow after that. Now, as I said, you know, Dan, my 27-year-old son at the time, passed away in July 2011. So it's nearly 10 years since he passed away. There was no gift in Dan passing. The gift came after in who I became in the awareness, the newfound awareness that I sought, the seeking and everything, even me developing a better way to do loss, all came from Dan passing. There is no way I would have ever probably left my CFO role if um, Dan hadn't passed. It was It was like I just loved my job. I loved what I do. But after Dan passed, and it took me a while, took me, you know, nearly two years for me to then go, I want more. I I'm different. I I this is not me anymore. 
And I had this yearning inside of me to go and find a better way to do loss. And that's what I did. And that's why we're here today talking. So I hope that helps. But as I said, I don't connect. Well, I do connect to the other side, but I connect for me. I don't connect and then share. Um, I'm not a medium. Um, and like I know we all have these things within the side of us, but I choose not to do that. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So let me go back to the comments. Um, right. Um, right. Okay. I think I've answered them. Scared to face the grief. Okay, Christine, there doesn't have to be grief. And that's the thing. So let me go back to that. Because I because and thank you, Christine, because you show up most weeks. And I really do appreciate the way you always comment and play with me, as I like to say. So the thing is that there doesn't have to be grief. Like we we have this thing inside of us that we have to grieve and suffer. No, we don't. When we know how to complete a relationship, right, and that's what the emotional journey is, you completing all of these emotional turmoils, and you can actually do it in such a way when everyone's alive in this realm so that you actually, there's three things, and I'm going to share the three things with you. So it's about you having, is there anything that you would like to apologise for, like in your relationship with your parents or with them individually or collectively? Um, find if there's anything you'd like to apologise because that's that's what you can do now while they're in this room. Then you can find things that you'd like to forgive, right, and then you can find things that you'd like to acknowledge. So if you do all of that so that when people move on to the next realm, there is no need for you grieving and suffering because your relationship is complete. Sure, you'll be sad, but sad is different to grieving and suffering. And especially when you're screaming and suffering in silence, okay? Now, you might miss them because they're not here, but that's different to not being able to get out of bed. So I've given you those three things for you to work through, right? And to actually just sit there, just grab a journal book and then just start writing. And at the top, you can, di you can divide the page into three and you can put those three headings on. Apologise, forgive and acknowledge. Okay? And acknowledge is anything that doesn't come under the first two headings. So you might like to acknowledge that they're being great parents. You might like to acknowledge for the things that they taught you, for the sacrifices they made for you. It could be whatever it is. I'm not going to put words into your mouth. But that when you do that, there is no need for you to grieve and suffer because you've completed the relationship. You've said everything that you wanted to say to them, whether it is to apologise, to forgive, and you don't even have to say it to their face, right? You can just say it in a letter, and that's the beauty of this. But you do have to read it to someone who is alive, okay? More than happy for it to be me. Okay. Hi, Carol from the US. Great to see you here. Um, good. Um, okay, yep. Okay, Jordan, I'm always looking for signs. I don't meditate, but I will write her a letter. Okay, write her a letter. And you, like there's a letter for you in those three categories, Jordan. Also start to look for signs. There will be something that keeps coming. It could be if you go outside and write the letter, it could be a little bird will come and visit you or a dragonfly or a butterfly or some sort of animal may sort of come up to you. And you, when you find that you can constantly keep seeing things, like, for example, with Dan, Dan has two major signs. One is a rainbow and one is a dragonfly. So when I know that they're around, um, I always say, how are you? My dad, on the other hand, is feathers. So whenever I see a feather on the ground, I will always say, hi, dad, how are you? What would you like to talk like?" you know, talk to me about today or what would you like to tell me or how would you like to guide me? And then I stop and then I get little voices, little messages. That's another way. They may be planting ideas into your head. Dan does that all the time, believe me. Everything I've done since he has passed, there is no way I would have ever done half of them without him guiding me from the other side. 
I hadn't written any books and I'm now in the process of finalising my fifth book. You know, I would, wasn't a big speaker. I used to look at my CEOs and I'd stand there and I'd go, wow, look at them, how great are they? And now it's like get the hook and drag, drag her off the stage, so to speak. So that's the thing and that's what I'm saying. There's gifts in every passing and the gift is who you become because remember we're all on a journey and it's all about us continually growing. And sometimes we get stuck in a rut. And it's been stuck in that rut that actually when we realise it, we actually go, am I living and loving my life? And more than likely you'll go, no, I'm just in this Groundhog Day days where every day is exactly the same and I'm not going out of my comfort zone. I'm not doing things that are different for me. I'm not growing. I'm doing the same thing I did 20 years ago. And that's not what life's about. Life is about you experiencing different things. And remember, just outside that comfort zone, there's a whole new world. But it's about you learning how to go beyond that comfort zone. And that's what is one of my specialties that I love to assist people with. So if you are feeling that you're stuck and you don't know how to get out of this comfort zone and you are in a bit of that rut, reach out. Okay, I hope that helps. Um, so, yeah, I'd also like to suggest, Jordan, um, maybe it is time for you to start meditating because. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've been speaking for nearly half an hour. I'll just have a quick sip. Because what meditation does to you, and there are so many benefits from it, and believe me, all you got to do is type in medica meditation benefits on the internet and you will see how many benefits it is for you. But what it also does is it assists you to lift your vibration. Now, and the higher and higher and higher you can lift your vibration, um, the, the easier it is for your mother and all beings on the other side to connect with you because they are higher beings and they can't come down into the lower things of grief and sadness and all those sort of things. So if you are suffering a lot in silence, maybe that's why you're not seeing the signs from your mother. And maybe that's why you um, have asked me for a reading today because you want someone who has lifted their vibration and is continually in that higher vibration to be able to connect more easily to the other side. But you can do it. And it is about you coming into that higher level. And um, I don't think I have a copy of the vibration is easily to show you the vibrational scale. Maybe next week I'll talk about the vibrational scale, so, which, is, which is really good for people to actually realise where are you vibrating at and you can easily find out where you're at just by looking at, you know, whether you're in anger or sadness or grief, whether you're in love, whether you're in ease or joy or happiness. You can obviously tell just by those words, you can feel in your body that, you know, when you're in anger, you're like, way down the scale as opposed and you know you're depressed and all those sort of things whereas when you just say the word happy joyous fun lo loving you can clearly see that you're higher up the vibration cell so one of the really easy things that i found um and i and i started doing this like within a week of dan passing was start to laugh like start to get the feel good hormones into your body just turn on your funniest ever show, TV show, something that always makes you laugh. And for my husband and I, it, it, it was com, um, coupling, C-O-U-P-L-I-N-G. Now, it's a British show that started in like 2001 and went for four years. It's hilarious. It's like a British Friends, but it's so much funnier. Because it, it goes, it's just, it's hilarious. I highly recommend it. I know that it's on Prime, um, but I don't know if it's on Netflix. I don't think it's on Netflix or Stan, but it is definitely on Prime. Um, and it's hilarious. Like my husband and I, I think most seasons like the British, they do 
uh, six, but I think two of them have eight. So there's like 50 of these shows over the four years. Uh, no, it wouldn't be that many. There'd be like 30 of these shows over the four years. Um, and they're hilarious. Honestly, they are hilarious. They make you laugh. There's one episode that the first time I saw it, I was literally crying from laughter. It was hilarious. Now, laughter helps you to lift your vibration because it brings in your parasympathetic nervous system, which is your rest and restore, okay? It's not the sympathetic, which is where you're in fight, flight or freeze. So it's really important that you start to bring that into your body because you'll, you'll start to get oxytocin, you know, um, dopamine, all of those really good feel feel good hormones into your body, which will help you to lift your vibration, which will help you to connect with your mum. Hope that answers your question, but really start looking into meditation. Even if it's a guided meditation, it will really, really help you. Um, right, Jordan. Um, anytime you think of her, she is there popping that thought into your head. Totally agree, Carol. They always are there. Um, and you know, just just have gratitude when you think of them. Try not to go into sadness too much. Um, don't stop your crying though. That's really important. If you feel like crying, cry. The more that you cry, the more that you release it, the more that you're not shoving it down and ignoring it. Now, emotions, energy in motion. So they need to be able to flow through you, not get stuck. Because if they are stuck, they will be stuck for a long time and they'll come out at the most inappropriate time and you even you'll be like oh my god where did that anger come from or where did this come from and of course when you deep dive into it you realize it's because you haven't been honoring yourself you haven't been honoring the relationship and you haven't been working through the emotions and that's one of my specialties that I love to do with people because when you work through them, you then will learn something, you will then grow. But more importantly, you don't have to repeat that pattern again and again to get that lesson. Remember, we're here on a journey, a journey of collecting these amazing gems so that at the end of our life, when we do our life review on the other side, we can then see how we were enhanced. Now, the fact that you've even here today is not a coincidence, okay? So know that. So it's here for you to possibly learn and grow and actually come from there. Hope that helps. Um, so to moving on a relationship. Happiest birthday. Uh, thank you, Zoe. I would love to have some guidance on having the strength to move beyond a relationship. Right, Zoe, this is a great question. So thank you for that. And also thank you for my birthday wishes. So it's about doing that deep dive into the relationship um, and taking responsibility for your part in it because so often we will go into the blame game as in when a relationship has ended and I'm, I'm just going to assume that it's, I'm just going to say it's a divorce, it, it doesn't have to be, but when a relationship ends for whatever reason it's so easy to put all of the blame onto the person who ended the relationship. And here you are grieving and suffering and it's really easy to blame them. It's their fault, I was perfect, they just didn't, you know, they had an affair or whatever reason that caused the uh, relationship to end. Now, there are two people in every relationship. So there is two people to take responsibility for what has happened in this relationship, okay? Now, I'm not saying that therefore you put all of the blame onto yourself. That's not what I'm saying. So please be clear on this. What I'm saying is there's two people in every relationship and there's two people that are doing and saying things or not doing things and not saying things and making life not as ideal for the other person or themselves as they would like to do. Now, we live in a world where we have created the busy, the busy, 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 busy. And we all get so busy in what we're doing, whether it's our career or whether it's the family, sometimes we neglect our better half. 
or our better other, or I'm not even going to call it our better half. Yeah, where did that come from? No, we'll get rid of that. Our, our ideal partner, okay? So that we come to a stage that down the track, they've been, in their opinion, ignored and not loved in the way that they want to be loved and not recognised for what they're contributing to this family or relationship, that eventually they may seek what they're missing somewhere else because someone else will listen to them. The other person doesn't have time to listen to them because they're too busy creating whatever they were, you know, their hopes, dreams and aspirations. So it's about you doing the deep dive into the relationship from your perspective. And it's not easy. It's not easy to reflect upon ourselves and to realise that, you know what, it wasn't just them, it was me as well. But the beautiful thing about doing this, and this is why it's so important, is that you will then learn so much about a relationship and about you that you will then not have to repeat in your next relationship. So it is about you doing the deep dive, Zoe, and i that's what I do. I help people to do that deep dive. But you will end up after you go, I, I, I call it the gift of loss, and it's a five-step process that I take people through. And it is called the gift of loss because of the gifts that you will receive from taking these five steps. They're not easy steps. I'm not going to lie to you. They're not easy steps. It's never easy when we do the deep dive into us. But when you get to the top step and you look back at how far you have come and what you have learned along the way, you will be in love and gratitude because you'll be going, oh, my God, how much have I learned about myself? And the beautiful thing is that you then don't have to repeat the same scenario in your next relationship, okay? And you will end up thanking that person, and I know that's really hard for you to say, because of all the gifts that they have given you through ending this relationship. So your strength comes from you deep diving into you. And Zoe, reach out, okay? Um, there is there is a, a new one which I will... Uh, which I'll copy now and put in, because apart from the downloading the book, you can also, I've got my Revitalize Your Life, which is which is a great program before you do the gift of loss um, thing, or you can go straight into doing the gift, gift of loss program with me. But this really helps you to reconnect to you because so often in a relationship, we lose sight of who we are. We lose our identity. It slowly gets chipped away from us through, you know, this person saying, don't do that or don't act like that or I don't like it when you're that person. So we may change for people and then we get to a stage that we look in the mirror and we go, who are you? Like, seriously, who are you? I don't know who you are. Like you're doing and saying things that I don't really like you doing and saying. And you're acting in such a way that is so unauthentic. And that's what this Revitalize Your Life is all about. It's about assisting you to come back to you, to for you to realise that you are the most important person in your life. You are the only person you're going to spend your entire life with. And it is about you realising, okay, what happens when I do put me first? How can I act? How can I be? Who am I? And that's what I love about what I do is I help people to shine the light on themselves through all of my different programs. You know, you can do them by yourself online or you can do them one-to-one -one with me. And that's what I love about it. It's just about shining the light on you so that you can create your better everyday life because isn't that what life's about? Hope that helps you. Um, Zoe, right. Um, also, everything you see, something that reminds you of her. That, yeah, that's right. So true, Carol. Thank you. Kerry, um, thanks, Karen. I was able to get, yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's true, Kerry. That's how we met. Um, Kerry, um, a while ago now, had a friend who passed and she went through the Revitalize Your Life program. And which really assisted her um, in her process 
and realising um, that she's very important in her own life. Right. Great, Christine. Uh, Vivian, great guidance and needed to hear this. Fabulous, Vivian. Thank you. Um, it, it's all past relationships are exactly the same as any sort of a relationship, Christine. And it is a process and it is the gift of loss process, which um, I have, you know, created. I've grabbed a bit from here and a bit from there and a bit from all over the place. And it really does help you to move through those emotions, as I said, so that you can receive the gift from them. And it's, it's you know, part of the process. One of the steps is that we do a deep dive into all of the loss events that have occurred into your life. And with over 40, there are going to be many loss events for all of us to work through. And some are more traumatic than others. And some you may not even realise a loss until you start to, you know, look at the list and deep dive into it. Let me just see if I can get the list up. Um, here you are. I'll bring the list up here. So when you start to have a look at all of the different sort of losses that can occur in your life, you start to realise that some of them you may have classed as um, fabulous and then the others you're just like, oh, I'm just really not sure. Um, so, yeah, so it's really important that you understand that we're all going to have multiple loss events in our lives and the more that we understand them, the more that we can move beyond them. Um, great, Christine. Have you just recently joined or did you join a while ago? Um, yeah, because it is the process that we go through. Um, okay, bye, Kerry. Great to see you here. Okay, Zoe, thank you. I feel so blessed to have turned in at the right time, tuned in. Yeah, fabulous, Zoe. Um, reach out, as I said. Oh, just now. Fabulous, Christine. I really do look forward to um, your feedback. You know, I'm so open to feedback. You know, some people are like, this is it. I'm not. I just see feedback as another growth opportunity because when people join the program and then come back and they say, oh, this was good, but this could have been better, I can tweak it because it's a program that's on, you know, that's that's there, that I can really easily just update whatever. So I look forward to your um, feedback, Christine, on, you know, how you enjoy it or if you don't enjoy it, if it helps you along the way. But just remember, this is about you reconnecting to you, which I found was a really important part. You know, so many people, they get stuck in life's losses and, you know, life, what life does and gives us. Um, that they, they're just so disconnected to themselves that they, they really find it hard to move, to find the love and the gratitude in whatever else has happened in their life. That's why I created the Revitalize Your Life because it shines a light over 45 days. Each day there's a different activity. Each day you will, you know, get an email from me, I'll load it into your own little dedicated area, which will be there forever. And as you do each activity, you get more and more connected to you. And the beauty thing is that you actually become more in love with who you are and you also become more in life of where you're going. You start to, you know, the whole program is about you finding joy and fulfilment in your life. It gives you the clarity so you can have joy and fulfilment in your life. Now, if you're wondering, joy and fulfilment are at the top of the scale of the vibration scale. So the more that we can bring joy and fulfilment into our life, obviously the higher we vibrate and the easier it is for us to move from love to loss and then back to love because it is that continual infinite journey that we will go on, all of us are on. Um, and it's really important that we know that. Um, yes, Christine, I'm sure that's not an easy one, but I am sure that you have um, embraced your child, your son now. Um, and good on you for being here. That's not an easy challenge that you decided in this lifetime um so if you have um last week i i mentioned some books to read by um which i i posted in here i might type them in now 
it is your soul's plan, your soul's, let me type it. Um, I'm just going to type it in here because if you haven't read this, I'm sure this will help you on your journey with your son, um, who obviously was your daughter. I really do hope that, that um, this will help you. So it's your soul's plan is the first book. Um, and the other and the second book is and the second book is your soul's gift. And both of them, gift, better type it right. Um, both of them are by Robert Swartz. Now, let me talk about these books um, at the moment. So what's Robert's done is he has looked at different challenges that we all may have in our life. And it could be, you know, something as a, a sex change for our child. It could be drug addicts. It could be, um, you know, anything that could happen, adoption, um, being raped, it, anything that could happen in our lives, having an autistic child, anything, anything that could happen in our life. He has looked at all of these various issues. And what he's done is the person who is experiencing this in their life, he's gone back through their guides, through their highest self, to their planning stage on the other side before they came down here and so that they can see what their soul had decided was what they wanted to learn and grow through in this lifetime. And it really does assist you to not only understand the other person more, but also to understand yourself more. And um, I think I mentioned that in, in my life, I have a person who is a drug addict. And it it's, you know, and they've been a drug addict for like, oh, let me see, 40 years. And they're a member of my family. And it's and it's obviously I love them and I but I couldn't understand them. But when I read this book. It really did assist me to realise because it actually says that sometimes the person has experienced this lifetime to help you grow, right? And when I read those words, I, I was so sad. I was actually crying for, my, um, for this person who the judgment that I had put on them, whereas it was like, oh, wait a minute, they've lived this life as much for me to learn and grow and to find my compassion and my empathy for them as much as anything else. And it really, really did assist me to become a better person and to have more empathy and understanding for others. We've never, ever walked a a step in anyone else's shoes so it really these sort of books really do help you to come to there so I hope that helps Christine um it's look I'm, I and I I have no idea what you're experiencing obviously I've never experienced anything like that but just know that um at the end of the day we always just want the best for our children we want the best for our loved ones and if that is the best for your son then I assume that it's the best for you. But, and it is about us moving past our, I guess, our perspective, our beliefs, our understanding and realise that there are infinite ways of doing anything. We live in an infinite universe. So, yeah, so I hope that helps. Now, um, well, I'm running out of time as always. Thanks everyone for being here and and you know and helping me, obviously, not helping me, I guess, you know, making this show so easy because of you asking questions and your comments and all those sort of things. Um yeah. And and thank you, Linda. Yeah, I and it is always nice to be able to to be there for people who are not living the journey that you may be living. Um, it may be easier or it may be perceived to be harder. It's, let's face it, it's just our perception. And sometimes our perception, our opinion gets in the way of us actually really, really being able to be there for so many more people. So, yeah. Um, yeah, 
well, you should have the login, Christine, so you should be able to do it. You know, just remember each day for 45 days, you'll receive a different activity. You can log into your special area, just always do it, um, and that's it. So that's it for me this week, and thank you all for being here. I look forward to, you know, possibly you being here next week at the same time, and if not, <coughs> excuse me, I've been obviously talking way too much, if not, remember that each day you, you know, make it meaningful, make it memorable, make it magical. Your day always comes back to you. So if you are having a bit of a crappy day, just figure out what you can do and maybe it's just about you turning on the TV, putting on your favourite comedy and laughing for half an hour because, believe me, you will feel so much better after doing that. So bye for now and I look forward to seeing you all again next week.